let's think about the possible grounds of political obligation. Remember first that if the problem of political obligation is to be solved, we need to find a ground for the obligation to obey the law. One suggested ground for political obligation is gratitude or benefit. This is one of the many solutions to the problem mentioned by Socrates in Crito, one of the Platonic dialogues. According to the gratitude or benefit accounts of political obligation, we're obliged to obey the state because of the great benefits that the state has bestowed upon us. By being benefited by the state, citizens acquire the obligation to obey the law out of gratitude. Let's call this the benefit theory of political obligation, namely the claim that citizens are obliged to obey the state because of the benefits that the state has bestowed upon them. We can break this down into two separate claims. First, that citizens are benefited by the state, and second, that because they're benefited by the state, they acquire the obligation to obey it. The first claim certainly seems plausible. So citizens typically are benefited by the state in the form of the kinds of public goods that states provide. They provide roads, defense, fire, police, and in most modern democratic states, healthcare. But when it comes to the second claim, things were a little less clear. It's not so clear that the fact that the state benefits us means that we're obliged to obey it. Partly that's because it's unclear how to answer the following questions. Question one, does being benefited always generate obligations? Question two, does being benefited by something generate obligations for you to obey the benefactor? Let us address these questions in turn. So first, does being benefited always generate obligations? Is benefiting someone sufficient to generate an obligation? Here's a reason to think not. Suppose that, unbeknownst to you, I wash your car, and I do a great job of it, but you didn't ask me to do so. In fact, suppose we've never met. I've saved you some money or some time, and so I've benefited you by washing your car. Does this give you an obligation? It's not obvious that you now have an obligation. After all, you didn't ask me to do this, you don't in fact know of my existence, and I just cleaned your car without your permission. Perhaps you have some obligation, perhaps an obligation to say thank you, although even that much isn't clear. But bestowing any benefit on someone isn't enough to give the other person an obligation to obey you. Maybe the other person has an obligation to express gratitude, but it doesn't give them an obligation to obey you. So this brings us to the second question. What the obligation that stems from being benefited by somebody gives you an obligation to do? Does being benefited by something generate obligations for you to obey the benefactor? Seemingly not. Here's another example. Suppose we have lunch and I pay for it. It seems pretty clear that you have an obligation to say thank you, but do you have an obligation to obey me? Certainly not. You don't have an obligation to obey me just because I've benefited you. So how is this relevant to the benefit theory of political obligation? Remember that the second part of the benefit theory was the claim that because citizens are benefited by the state, they acquire an obligation to obey the state. The objection is that we can see that this claim is false because as in the case where I buy you lunch or I wash your car, benefiting someone doesn't generate an obligation to obey the benefactor. It seems that at most it generates obligations to feel or express gratitude not obligations to obey. So if we have an obligation to obey the law, it must have some ground other than just being benefited by the state.